Welcome, everybody. Our top theme that we've been watching closely for 2024 is a move and goal. This is something that Mark and I have been talking about for several years, that we believe that eventually there would be a massive move in gold and precious metals in general to the upside. But one thing we always talk about is there is a, a time and a place for every theme. Just because we have a belief that something could happen doesn't mean that we run out and put that trade on. We watch, we wait, and we're patient. We're patient for the time that that theme becomes activated. We're coming to you tonight because we believe that this theme that we've been watching closely is now active. And we believe because it's active, there could be a short window of time in which you have to get this theme on at a really good price. So we wanted to make sure that we got to you tonight to share what we're seeing so that you can be ready. And Mark and I are here to support you to make sure that this theme can be maximized. It can be maximized to protect your estate by being able to have physical gold on hand. It can be maximized by diversifying your portfolio so that you can profit during times that are inflationary, times of easy money, times of weak currencies. And we're here to make sure that you can not only diversify, but that you can make money in appreciation, that you can make real money off of this move. So these three different areas, protection, diversification, and appreciation, we want to help you make sure that you are ready. So tonight, we just want to share a few insights as to what we're seeing in the market with you so that you can be ready to make the decisions that you need to make. So Mark, let's talk about what we've been seeing the last few days. Um, you mentioned Powell's testimony today before Congress. You want to talk a little bit about that today? Yeah, I mean, so we've, we had, we've had about a hundred dollar move in gold the last four days. Uh, the GLD, the gold ETF, broke out a couple days ago above its all-time high. But gold, spot gold, kind of had a spike uh, last in December, and it went, uh, you know, 2160 or so was the level there, and it really hadn't broken out. And like to see both of those break out and close above those levels to confirm. And tonight was the first time that that really happened. And it's interesting, maybe coincidental, maybe not, that it happened after Powell's testimony before Congress, where Powell was a little bit more dovish than people were kind of fearing. So he was talking about, he talked out of both sides of his mouth as usual, but he basically said, you know, it's it's too early to cut rates yet, uh, but because if we cut them too soon, inflation could take off. But uh, we're thinking that we're going to be cutting sometime this year, uh, you know, and, and so he really didn't put any kind of timetable on it. But he also didn't downplay this idea that the market has of a cut by June. Now, we've, we're talking about in our gold workshop how when the Fed cuts rates, that's usually an acceleration period for gold. So it's one of the macro themes that we look for to tell us that we're, we're ready to accelerate higher. And so the Fed's talking about cutting rates, and now we're getting a breakout in gold. Uh, and it's a breakout above 13-year highs. So that's normally a pretty good place on an intermediate term basis. Sometimes you'll get a buy the rumor, sell the news type thing where you get a, a brief correction. But on an intermediate term time frame, usually when you break multi-year highs, clearly that's a good time to add and it's a good time to start getting more aggressive in your strategies. Totally. And one of the things that you've been talking about, Mark, is something that's not talked about in the media at all which is really going on with the BRICS Plus and the impact that BRICS Plus has on the supply demand dynamic of gold worldwide. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, another thing that really helped gold today, in addition to Powell's kind of slightly dovish testimony, was that the dollar went down. Right. And, and you want to understand that that, that that doll and period where the dollar is going down is really another macro area where we where you have a lot more wind at the back 
of gold uptrend. And we had this week BRICS Plus announcing uh, that they're going to be establishing sort of a way of bypassing SWIFT using blockchain and using BRIC Plus currencies to be able to do international payments. Now, SWIFT is, is slower than blockchain. Uh, and so, you know, so it's, it's uh, very possible that they're going to be coming up with something that really is a pretty good replacement. Why is that a big deal? Well, the, the U.S. imposed these sanctions on Russia where they basically stole their, their central bank assets, right? They seized them. And now they're even talking about not only seizing them, but liquidating them and using them to arm Ukraine against Russia. All of that was, is basically internationally illegal, but the U.S. just does it. And that's, you know, that maybe in the short term that does something for them, but what it does for other countries that are not directly in the U.S. orbit is they say, hey, if you could seize our, our T-bonds and our dollar assets that we hold in our central bank and have to have on deposit with you, that's not a good reserve asset for us. I don't want to have something, if the U.S. disagrees with my policy, they can just seize my central bank assets. And so really since 2014, uh, BRICS central banks in particular, but a lot of them around the world have been selling off their bonds and dollar assets and buying gold instead. And that's really been a big impetus for the bull market. Now we have another policy being announced that they're going to create their own SWIFT. Realize that the BRICS plus economies, the GDP of them is larger than the GDP of the G7. And the population is nearly half the world. So this is a huge, huge economic block that's moving away from dollar trade. It's very negative for the dollar, and it's more positive for gold and negative for bonds. We want to be aware that this is another thing that's instigating this breakout. Yeah, I think that's really, really important that you're bringing that up. They're really trying to create almost like a quasi-gold-backed currency, right? So that it'll yeah. actually give people confidence to use it, because otherwise people won't trust those countries. Um, yeah, and really for trade, gold is a much better asset to trade than is a dollar because it balances trade and, and paper currencies don't do that. So there's all kinds of advantages to that. And these are the emerging countries, a lot of them. And so this is a big deal, even though the Biden administration just doesn't seem to get that they've overstepped what they can do. And it's really costing them now. Yeah, I totally agree. The other thing that you mentioned in this update, you and I independently doing our work have coming up with similar numbers where you and I both think there's a chance that gold could eventually go to $5,000 an ounce. And, and technically, there's a chance that it could run to the 3,000s and do so relatively quickly. So, I mean, the technical target for the cup, there's a 13-year cup and handle pattern on the monthly charts that's just been broken out of. And that that the target for that is in the mid 3000s. So that's that's a pretty big move. It doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. It could be over a, a number of years, but right. that's an upside target. And then if you look at gold in after inflation terms, it peaked out at 840 in January of 1980. That would be about 3144 today. And then that 2011 peak would be about 2,600 today. So in real terms, to really get to all-time highs, we've got to break above 3,150 or so. Yeah. And I think another element of this, in my mind, when I look at this, Mark, we saw Bitcoin. Bitcoin was under, it was under 30,000 in October. And it made a run from under 30,000 to 69,000, right? It's more than doubled and just in just less than five months. And I, I, I feel like you said, this has been building for many years, 13 years, like you said. There's a potential to have a rapid move in gold, similar to what we've just seen in Bitcoin in the last five months. Yeah, and I think there's a possibility that if, if the Fed does begin cutting rates later this year, or even talks about doing it more with more certainty, that that's really going to be a green light for sort of a lot of different bubbles, a lot of different markets to really bubble up and shoot higher 
Uh, you know, we've already seen AI stocks and Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and a lot of these other markets really move up and test highs. Now we're starting to see breakouts in gold. Bitcoin's threatening to break out. Even oil is threatening to break out. We get a lot of breakouts and moves higher. It's something that can really feed on itself. Yeah, totally. So, Mark, this is awesome that you shared this. And I know for you and I, one of the things that we're really passionate about is we just want people to be prepared for this. We want them to be ready to go. And one of the great things is that in our, in Mark and I, in our separate histories, each of us have deep experience in precious metals, each in our own way. And I've learned so much from Mark over the years, seeing the way that Mark has built several of these models that he uses, not just to time goal but also to have an understanding of when you should be invested in gold miners, when you should be invested in gold junior miners, when you should be invested in other precious metals and seeing how all these play off of each other because there's a right time and a right place within the bull market to be in each of these. And these are the sort of things that we teach you in our workshops. So hopefully we've got your attention so you're paying you're paying close attention to what we're showing you today. And then from there, we would love to show you how you can really take advantage of this. So we have a gold rush intensive workshop that we're running right now. That is phenomenal. If this is something that you're interested in, you'll see the link attached to this video where you can click on it to get more information. So every time we look at something like this, nothing is foolproof. Nothing always goes exactly the way that we think. This could be a false start. But one of the things, though, is this is a probability game. We do the work. We know there's a, a, a high probability this could work. It's not perfect, but we, we play the odds. It's not just an odds of it working, but it's also a game of reward to risk where we can make multiples what we risk on this idea. So we want to get ahead of this with you so you're ready. So thanks for giving us this time tonight, and we'll see you soon.